Hello everyone, Weather Jamaica here. Welcome to this updated video on the weather across Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean. It is Sunday evening, January 14, 2024. Now before you jump into it, please ensure that you guys like the video, share it, subscribe and tap notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I post a brand new video. Feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section letting me know what though that has been like in your year recently. Also, feel free to ask any other related question that you might have about the future of in your specific area. Alright, so let's just take a look at the surface map of the Atlantic for this evening. We can still see that we have that ridge of high pressure that's sending all of those easterly trade winds across the main development region into the Caribbean. And we can also see that we still have numerous cold fronts across the northern section of North Atlantic. One cold front right here to the north of the main development region is represented by those that blue line with the spikes and another cold front that is right there off the east coast of the united states touching all the way down into portions of southern florida the bahamas and sections of western cuba if we take a look at the visible satellite images of the atlantic before the sun went down we can actually see those low level clouds being pushed from east to west across the main development region into the caribbean and some of these low level clouds definitely have some amount of isolated showers within them bring some amount of rainfall to sections of the leeward islands the windward islands sections of eastern jamaica sections of the cayman islands later on tonight as well and we can also see the clouds associated with those cold fronts that i mentioned earlier one right here to the north of the main development region and the other set of clouds associated with that other cold front right here off the east coast of the United States, touching down into portions of Florida, the Bahamas, and Western Cuba. We'll be talking more about the Caribbean weather later on. Let us focus our attention on this tweet made by Ben Noel on Twitter. He's one of the people on the social medias that if you're not following, you need to follow him as it relates to the hurricane season. He is usually right with most of what he states considering that he's a meteorologist in new zealand so although he's in new zealand he knows his stuff and he made this post recently he stated the january nmme update suggests that oceanic la nina conditions will be strengthening during the atlantic hurricane season the tropical atlantic is also forecast to be warmer than average these drivers would greatly increase the odds for an active season. And he posted this little animation showing the current conditions that we have in January. We have the warm waters presented by the reds that have to do with the El Nino. We know the El Nino usually causes upward motion in the eastern Pacific Ocean, bringing more clouds and storms over that side of the earth. And it suppresses the activity over the Atlantic but it is forecasted to become a la nina where the waters get cooler than normal as you can see by the blue shades and that would in turn bring more sinking air across the eastern pacific and more rising air wherever we have the warmest waters and it seems we're going to be having those warm waters around the time we get into june july august september that's around the time of our hurricane season so that's definitely concerning considering that we know La Nina brings more storms to the Atlantic including Jamaica and not only that he also posted a precipitation forecast map for July to September he stated above normal rainfall represented by the greens is strongly favored in the Atlantic main development region Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico during hurricane season keep in mind that this tweet was made at January 7th January 8th by the way it's still very early and forecasts will be refined but this is a concerning sign for abundant hurricane activity later this year so it is quite concerning i remember he posted pictures like this showing the forecast long all the way out around this time of the year january in the year 2020 and we remember how drastic that year was in terms of hurricane activity and he's posting something else from the nmm emails saying all of these greens that represent above normal rainfall stretching all the way from africa across the main development region into the caribbean for that time period july 
through to September 2024. So it's definitely concerning, especially where we have those darker shades of greens. You know, that's definitely going to be a lot of moisture, tropical waves, possibly developing into tropical depressions, tropical storms, or even hurricanes. So we're definitely in for an above normal hurricane season according to this map. However, we know the real official sources have not made their prediction colorado state university noaa the weather company we just have to wait because just as ben said it is not refined as yet so we have to stay updated to see exactly what unfolds because we know these things can change it is not set in stone but this is like a crystal ball looking ahead through the hurricane season so we'll keep you posted on what exactly happens Alright, so let's just take a look at what took place across Jamaica for today. So it has been quite dry for the past week, which explains the lack of videos from us here at Weather Jamaica. We've been focusing more on the earthquake preparedness, considering that it was earthquake preparedness week or earthquake awareness week last week. And we usually, you know, keep our public aware, considering that we are prone to major earthquakes just like what we see in haiti and never mind that we saw that today we had some amount of clouds bring some amount of overcast skies and isolated shores the sections of some northern parishes so northern parishes we know we're talking about sections of portland st mary st Anne, lonnie st james hanover and we indeed got some of that in the morning across those parishes southern parishes not so much quite clear then as the day progressed, as we can see on the halfway tree live cam from about 12.52 p.m. today, we saw that it was a sunny day across the corporate area, halfway tree, and it was the case for a majority of the island. Keep in mind that if you'd like to see more live streams like this, feel free to visit See Jamaica's YouTube channel as they have live streams of Crossroads, Downtown, and so on and we actually have a partnership with this youtube channel so it will be doing it would be doing us a favor all right so let's just take a look at the visible satellite images of jamaica before the sun went down we can see that we did have some amount of clouds coming in from the east to set the stage for what's to come tomorrow we're definitely going to be in for some amount of clouds and rainfall if not tonight into tomorrow across especially eastern parishes in jamaica and we can see the latest infrared satellite images still showing those clouds coming in from the east as represented by those grays. As it relates to the temperatures right now, we can tell we have 27 degrees Celsius in Montego Bay, 28 degrees Celsius in Kingston. And by about 3 a.m. on Monday morning, we should have temperatures dipping down to about 24 degrees Celsius in Montego Bay, 22 degrees Celsius in Kingston. As it relates to the temperature forecast for tomorrow, we saw that today was definitely a, a hot day considering that this is what's taking place. A lot of oranges surrounding the island of Jamaica right here. You know the oranges are representative of above normal temperatures as we can see by the key on the right. That represents 1 to 2 to even 3 degrees Celsius above normal temperatures. And that's the forecast for tomorrow Monday according to this GFS map. This map is showing 18D on Monday, and we calculate that that's about 1 p.m. on Monday, and we see that Jamaica is embedded in those oranges. So definitely up to 3 degrees Celsius above normal temperatures are what's expected across the island. And we know that the average temperatures for the month of January for Jamaica are about 86.5 degrees Fahrenheit. When we take a look at the thermometer, 86.5 degrees Fahrenheit is about the same as 30 degrees Celsius. So, considering that we're going to be receiving up to 3 degrees Celsius above normal temperatures for tomorrow, we should be receiving anywhere from 30 to 33 degrees Celsius at most for Jamaica's temperature on Monday. As to the dry air map, we can see that the dry air is represented by the yellows, oranges and reds by the key at the bottom. And some people might mix this map up for the siren dust no it's not the siren dust because we see all of those reds of the south and the east coast of the united states and it is not siren dust at all how could the siren dust make it so far and we haven't been affected across jamaica it's dry ear this is the dry ear map we see a lot of oranges 
surrounding Jamaica. It's a lot of dry air and it's responsible for the lack of rainfall that we've been having, especially in the month of January, we know our dry season. This map right here is the actual Saharan dust map. So we can see the browns represented right here across sections of the Eastern Main Development Region and Africa. That's where we have the Saharan dust and that's where it's gonna be for 2 p.m. on Monday, January 15. And we see the rest of the Caribbean should be in the clear Jamaica, especially. As it relates to the wave forecast, we can actually see that we still are surrounded by a lot of blue colors. And we can see that by the key on the bottom right, these blue colors are representative of 1 to 1.5 meter wave heights. And that's because the wind, they're going to be coming in from the east, more so from the east on the north coast, more so from the east southeast on the south coast. And we can see more so in the way of greens that represent anywhere from 10 to 20 knot winds as we can see by the key on the bottom and both the year and the GFS are in consensus with this. Also we see that we're going to be having that ear piling up wherever we have those darker shades of blues. So maybe a section of some north central and western parishes in Jamaica. So we'll see exactly what unfolds. Either way let's, go on to, let's get down to the meat of the matter. We're here for all of these maps, the precipitation forecast maps. And we can see the blues that represent rainfall being forecasted for a section of eastern Jamaica right here. All of those blues, what time is that? This is about 5 a.m. Jamaica time. And we see that both the Euro and the GFS models are showing something similar. We see the rainfall for eastern parishes in Jamaica. Some of these rain bands could skirt some coastal areas of some northern and southern parishes. And you can see it right here, definitely Eastern Jamaica. So sections of Portland, St. Thomas, spilling into sections of Kingston and St. Andrew. That's 5 a.m. Skipping ahead to about 9 a.m. now, we still have much of the same. Eastern parishes, some of this rainfall might even brush the coast of St. Mary, section of St. Anne, maybe brushing the coast of St. Catherine, Clarendon. And it's definitely still showing more of that rainfall for Eastern Jamaica from 5 a.m. all the way up to 9 a.m. This is 9 a.m. and we still have that rainfall. Then finally by 2 p.m. we see that most of these blues start to take shape across not only eastern parishes but sections of some central and western parishes in Jamaica. So just as predicted with all of that easterly flow across the island, we're definitely going to be in for some amount of rainfall spilling into sections of some central and western parishes during the afternoon. Central parishes, we know we're talking about those parishes in the county of Middlesex. So St. Anne, St. Mary, St. Catherine, Clarendon, Manchester. Western parishes, you know we're talking about those parishes in the county of Cornwall. So St. Elizabeth, Westmoreland, Hanover, St. James, Trelawney. Keep in mind that it is not expected every single year, just some sections, some parts in certain areas. So don't be upset if you were expecting rainfall and you didn't get it. Either way, we know for a fact that it's going to be raining across eastern Jamaica. Look at this map from the Euro and this map from the GFS. They are both showing the accumulated precipitation forecast for the next 24 hours. It's showing where the most rainfall is expected from now up until 10 p.m. on Monday. And we see that majority of the rainfall, as represented by the key on the right, is going to be confined to eastern Jamaica. So, section of St. Thomas, Portland, spilling into sections of maybe St. Mary, section of Kingston and St. Andrew. And we see that the euro is showing that eastern Jamaica is expected to receive up to 0 0.41 of an inch of rainfall, as represented by these yellow colors. GFS showing something similar with some yellows. Euro is a bit more robust, but we'll see exactly what unfolds. We know when it comes to rainfall, we have to look for consensus. We have to look for agreement from both of these models. And we do see the agreement that sections of Eastern Jamaica are going to be in for some amount of rainfall tomorrow. So if you're going out, if you live in Portland and St. Thomas, please ensure that you walk with your rain gear. And we're indeed grateful that we're going to be receiving some amount of rainfall tomorrow. We're in the month of January. We're in our dry season and we usually receive up to 97.75 millimeters of rainfall across the island. Especially on the north coast where we usually have those northeast trade winds and that relief rainfall. But we see that we have an easterly flow across the island for tomorrow. So 
definitely eastern Jamaica, possibly spilling into central western Jamaica for the afternoon hours. So we'll take all the rain for that we can get during the month of January before we head into February, which is traditionally our driest month of the year. So yes, we'll take all the rain for that we can get before we head into the driest month of the year as stated where you know the national water commission will start to impose some water restrictions we have more bushfires taking place we see the jamaica fire brigade going around more and more trying to put out these fires so yes we're indeed grateful that we're going to be receiving rainfall tomorrow all right so that is it for the forecast across jamaica let us focus our attention on the rest of the caribbean so we do see those low level clouds coming in from the east Bring some amount of isolated shores to section of Haiti, the Dominican Republic, section of Puerto Rico, the Leeward Islands, the Windward Islands especially, so Barbados, section of St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, section of Tobago, Trinidad later on tonight. You can also see some clouds coming into section of French Guyana, Suriname, Guyana, sections of Costa Rica, sections of the Cayman Islands as well. And if we take a look at the Doppler radar images of the Northeastern Caribbean, we do see those green colors that represent a amount of light rainfall so we saw that we had that coming in from the east throughout the day across sections of puerto rico sections of the water surrounding the leeward islands and by the latest images we still had some amount of rainfall coming in maybe some hit or miss showers here are there for Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kate, section of Guadeloupe, maybe section of Anguilla, St. Martin later on tonight. The British Virgin Islands definitely getting in on that isolated shore activity, northern Puerto Rico especially. And if we take a look at the Barbados radar, we do see that most of that rainfall is confined to wherever we just saw it on the satellite images. So definite sections of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, maybe some isolated rainfall for sections of St. Lucia, Barbados, especially to the waters to the south and west of Barbados. The Grenadine Islands definitely getting soaked right now. Sections of Grenada, sections of Tobago getting in on that rainfall. And we can also see some rain bands coming in from the east to possibly affect section of Trinidad later on tonight. And if we take a look at the wider view of Doppler radar images, we can see that rainfall associated with that cold front that affected sections of florida today still getting some amount of isolated shores in some spots and we can also see some rainfall affecting sections of the abc islands suriname and french guyana as we speak if we take a look at the temperature forecast for tomorrow we do see that this map from the gfs is showing 18th on monday that's actually 1 pm on monday and we do see the orange and yellow colors that represent above normal temperatures plaguing majority of the caribbean into the gulf of mexico northern south america central america definitely warmer than average temperatures are in the forecast for monday taking a look at the siren dust forecast for monday at 2 pm we do see that majority of the caribbean should be in the clear as all the dust associated with the Sahara Desert should be across sections of the Eastern Main Development Region and Africa. Taking a look at the wave forecast, we do see that this map from the Eura and this map from the GFS, both of them are showing more so in the way of blues across sections of the Caribbean. And we can also see that we have more so some purples right there to the water to the south of Jamaica, to the north of Colombia. And we know those purples are representative of about 2 meter wave heights, even up to 3 meter wave heights. Well, the majority of the rest of the Caribbean should be getting in on those blue colors that represent 1 to 1.5 meter wave heights. And that's because the winds are going to be coming in from the east, averaging wherever we see those greens averaging anywhere from 15 to 20 knots we do see some pockets of yellows here and there and we know those yellows are representative of 25 to 30 knot winds as it relates to the rainfall forecast now we're looking for a consensus we're looking for where we see rainfall on both maps so we know that there's a high certainty of it actually raining within the next 24 hours. Keep in mind that both of these maps from the Euro and the GFS are showing all the rainfall that's expected from now up until 10 p.m. on Monday. And we do see that we have some amount of rainfall for sections of Florida, sections of the Northern Bahamas, not to mention sections of the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, as we just mentioned earlier, as well as sections of Haiti, the Dominican Republic, sections of Eastern Puerto Rico, sections of the Leeward Islands, Antigua and Barbuda, sections of Guadeloupe, Dominica, not to mention sections of 
Trinidad and Tobago, Grenada. You can also see that rainfall for sections of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, as well as French Guyana, Suriname spilling into sections of southern and eastern Guyana, coastal areas of Venezuela, the ABC Islands, western Colombia, sections of northwest Panama, Costa Rica, eastern Nicaragua, eastern Honduras, sections of southeastern Belize. That's on the Euro though. We don't see that on the GFS for southeastern Belize. We'll see exactly what unfolds. Either way, we can see that for the most part. Both Euro and the GFS are in consensus that there is some amount of rainfall for these spots that we just mentioned. We know that when they're in consensus like this, the chances of actually happening are much higher. Alright, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching.